If you'll please take the Word of God and turn with me to the New Testament, to the book of Acts. We're going to go to Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. We'll begin reading at verse 54. Acts chapter 7 and verse 54. The Bible says, Acts chapter 7, verse 54, When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. That means he died. They stoned him to death. Why don't you go back to verse 55 with me of Acts chapter 7. The Bible says here at the beginning of the verse, But he, this is what I want you to see, being full of the Holy Ghost. That he, Stephen. But he being full of the Holy Ghost. I want to talk to you tonight on that subject from this passage of Scripture, being full of the Holy Ghost. And I doubt uh, that we'll get through all of it tonight, so we'll probably be talking about it next Wednesday too. But it should be something that you're very interested in, being full of the Holy Ghost. Not scary. This isn't uh, Halloween stuff. It's the real stuff. The Lord, it's Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father... We thank you for your word tonight. We thank you that it's possible to be filled or full of the Holy Ghost because we have the Holy Spirit living within us when we received you as our personal Savior. Thank you for the way that you've set up salvation and what you've done for us, how you freely give us salvation and give us your Holy Spirit and give us all things. Lord, uh, we, are, we should be so much more grateful than we are at this moment. Would you help us tonight? Would you help us realize it's more, there's more to walking with you and living for you and being saved than just the nominal things that believers talk about? It's the most important thing is being filled with the Holy Ghost. Having you to control us, Lord, we sure do need it. We will get into a lot of trouble without you. I acknowledge that tonight in my own flesh, in my own life. And so we need you, Lord. Please teach us some things through your word tonight. Use this story, use Stephen, to stir us and, and guide us and give us a hunger to be filled with the Holy Ghost in our lives. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. We're introduced to Stephen in Acts chapter 6. So you want to go back a chapter. We're in Acts chapter 7 right now. But in Acts chapter 6, we get introduced to Stephen here in verse 5 of Acts chapter 6. The Bible says, And, and the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. He was full of faith and full of the Holy Ghost, the Bible says in Acts chapter 6, 5. So we're introduction there. This is when he was selected as one of the first deacons. We believe this is where the Bible talks about deacons. Some people don't believe that, but that's okay. Uh, we'll all be on the same page when we get to heaven. Uh, whether if it's my page or their page, we'll all be on the same page. We'll understand it the way we ought to, okay? But if these were deacons, and I believe they were, he was one of the first deacons to be chosen here. And listen at this qualification. He is full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. Full of faith and the Holy Ghost. Um, that's good for credentials right there. And then he got in trouble. Oh, no. He got in trouble. And that's not because he was out honky-tonking 
or he was out doing bad things, tipping cows over in people's fields, right? He wasn't burning people's fields down. He wasn't doing all these things that he wasn't supposed to be doing. The Bible goes on to tell us that he got in trouble uh, with the religious leaders for carrying out the Lord's work at the end of chapter 6. So in verse 12, here toward the end of chapter 6, it says, And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council. So he's, uh, he's in trouble. He's in trouble. Now he's, now he's full of faith and he's full of the Holy Ghost. But he's in trouble. Then in Acts chapter 7 and verse 1, the Bible says, Then said the high priest, Are these things so? So they came and they started giving all this false accusation against them. And they said, Are these things so? Well, Stephen here is being questioned by the high priest about whether or not the things that were accused of him were true. Well, Stephen, <laughs> being full of faith and full of the Holy Ghost, uh, which will never make sense to the world, <laughs> but after all of this has taken place, I mean, he was just on a high, wasn't he? He just got chosen as one of the men to help serve the widows and uh, as a deacon to serve amongst that church there. And, uh, and then he starts doing what he's supposed to be doing, and then he gets in trouble. And then when he gets in trouble, he's asked, Are these things so? And then he proceeds to preach a 52-verse sermon from Acts chapter 7, verse 2 to verse 53, pointing out that everyone that was questioning him were all hypocrites. Now, he, I want to remind you, he was full of faith and he was full of the Holy Ghost. He wasn't in his flesh and he wasn't trying to make people feel bad. He wasn't lifted up with pride and he wasn't saying how bad they were but overlooking everything in his life. The Holy Spirit was leading him to preach this and to tell these people this. And he's full of the Holy Ghost. Now that leads us up to where we just read in Acts chapter 7. And this passage of Scripture tells us not only were they against him and stirred up against him for doing what the Holy Spirit wanted him to do, when he preached the Word of God and the truth to them, then they stoned him and they killed him. Remember, He's full of faith, and he's full of the Holy Ghost. So there's some things about being full of the Holy Ghost that in our flesh is not so pleasant. We say, oh, we don't want that. <laughs> if we were told that being full of the Holy Ghost would cause this to happen to us, you might be a little more, whoa, whoa, whoa I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be full of the Holy Ghost. What does it mean to be full of the Holy Ghost? Well, let's just look here and see in this passage of Scripture some things about that. First of all, we're going to look at chapter 7. We're going to look at verse 55 and 56. And we're going to see that being full of the Holy Ghost will make you different. <laughs> you think Stephen was different? Yeah, he was different. He might not have been different from those, those other men that got chosen to be deacons because they had the same things going in their life. And we shouldn't be extremely different from other believers who are walking with God and full of the Holy Ghost. But who we should be different from is the world. We should be different. And he was different from the religious world and the secular world. He was different. So how was he different? All right, let's look here in verse uh, 55 and 56. And the Bible says, just to remind us here what's going on, but he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God, and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. So first of all, I want you to see his sight was different than the world's. His sight was different. The way he saw things and what he saw was different than the world's. What do I mean? In verse 55, it says that he saw the glory of God. He saw the Lord's glory. The world's not going to see that. The world thinks God's stupid. That he's just there so we can lean on him. That he's not even real. He's made up in our minds to make us feel better. They don't see the Lord's glory. They don't see who he is. But Stephen saw it. And if you're full of the Holy Ghost, it's going to make you different because you're going to see God completely different than those who deny him. They don't, they're those that don't know him. He also, it says not only, it says the glory of God, but it says of God. He saw 
the one true and living God. It wasn't just any God. There's only one God in heaven. That's it. And he saw the glory of that God, the one that was in heaven, when the heavens opened and he saw him, the one true and living God. Now, there's a religious world out there that has a bunch of different gods. Some of them, they're their own God. But it's not the one and true living God. And we see the one true and living God in the Bible, and we see his glory. And then in verse 55 and 56, he makes this statement. He says, And Jesus standing on the right hand of God, and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man, that's Jesus, standing on the right hand of God. Anytime you see the right hand of God, it's referring to his authority. And there's blessings there. But there's authority there at the right hand. So he saw the Lord's authority. And I'll tell you, if you're full of the Holy Ghost and you see the Lord's authority, that's a lot different than the world or the religious people that don't see that God has authority. Most of the time, religious people think they have authority through their teachings and what they're doing. There is no authority outside of God. There's no authority outside of what he gives. And we see the Lord's authority here. So what he saw was different than what the world saw. And a person that's full of the Holy Ghost will know and understand things about the Lord that others do not know and understand. We should desire that. Not that we want to be better than anybody else. But if I say I know the Lord, I need to know him. If he feels me, I need to know him. He needs to be showing me something. This is, this is true, certainly, of the lost man, but it's also true of the carnal believer. Meaning, if we're full of the Holy Ghost and walking with God, the, the world, the lost man's going to dis disagree with us. They're not going to see things the way we see it. And you say, well, every other believer should. Well, that's not true either. There's believers that are very carnal, and they don't know the first thing about the Word of God, or about God, because they, they haven't let God do anything in their life. They might not have ever been filled with the Holy Spirit outside of when they got saved and the Holy Spirit come to live inside of them. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, if you'd look, look at that with me, we're going to read a few verses here. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, beginning in verse number 9. The Bible says this, But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, Neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed unto us by his Holy Spirit, or by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of, of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now, we have received... Not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Now, he's talking to believers. He's saying, when you got saved, you didn't, you didn't receive the spirit of the world. By the way, we already had the spirit of the world. It's already working in us. We had the spirit of disobedience as the children of disobedience, Ephesians 2 tells us. We didn't need to receive that. What we received was the spirit which is of God so that we might know some things. God teaches us these things. He shows us these things. He gives us these understanding. Verse 13, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the, car, or the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, that's the natural man, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Chapter 3, look at verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual. Now he just got through telling them, when they got saved, and he led them to the Lord, probably most of them, these wicked Corinthian people that lived in a wicked Corinthian city, he said, you didn't receive the spirit of the world. You received something different than you already had. He said, and you can't discern in your natural man the things of the spirit of God. Only if you're walking in the spirit of God, only if you're yielded in your spirit to him. 
Then he goes on and he tells them, now this is your problem. And he says, and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual. Meaning, you're not spiritual believers. But as unto carnal, even as to babe, unto babes in Christ. He, he told them, you're walking in your flesh. You're a believer. You've been given the Spirit of God, but you're walking in the flesh. That means they're not filled with the Holy Ghost. Verse 2 says, I have fed you milk and not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. Well, that's not too encouraging, is it? He said, I can't give you meat or you're going to choke to death on it. I can't give you anything substantial about God because your natural man can't receive it. You're just a baby in Christ. Now, those people that are babies in Christ because they're new believers, right? New believers should be babies in Christ. And they should be drinking the milk. And they should be growing. But if you've been in the Lord for 20 years, you shouldn't be a baby in Christ anymore. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Being filled with the Holy Spirit of God. So lost people are going to see things different than the person who's saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. And so are the carnal believers. Those that say no to God, no to His control in their life, no to the Holy Spirit filling them, I'm going to do it in my flesh. You're going to see things differently. Mark it down. That's what will take place. Look back at Acts chapter 6 with me. So not only his sight was different than the world's, but his character was different than the world's. Talking about the world's character. Should be. Should be. Acts chapter 6. Acts chapter 6 and verse 3. Look at some character things here. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom ye may appoint over this business. So, when he says look out among you, you know what he's telling them to do? See how they're living. How else are they going to know? How else are you going to know other than the outward show that somebody's living? Right? They can't see their spirit. They can't see their heart. They can't see their soul. But they see an outward manifestation in what they're doing. And so they says, look out these men. And what are you looking for? They need to be an honest report. They need to have wisdom. Look at verse 5. And saying, the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. So now we find another one. Um, again, full of the Holy Ghost, but now faith is at it. And then, of course, these other men are there along with him. And then in verse 8, the Bible says, And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. His character was different. Stephen was full of honesty, it says in verse 3. We saw that. He's full of honesty. Not only honesty, but full of the Holy Ghost. But what comes along with being full of the Holy Ghost? You are an honest person. Honesty is not the best policy. Honesty is the only policy for the spirit-filled believer. You can't do anything else but be honest if you're full of the Holy Ghost. That contrasts with the lying world. Your natural man doesn't want anything to do with honesty. John chapter 8 and verse 44, Jesus said this, and liberals would say this isn't very nice. Listen to what he said. John 8, 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. The devil, he's the father of it. We want to lie the Holy Spirit will make us to be honest. No lying, no guile, no deception. That's what the devil does. Stephen was full of honesty. It makes your character different when you're full of the Holy Spirit. Stephen was also not only full of honesty, but he's full of wisdom, verse 3 tells us. When he was full of the Holy Ghost, he had honesty and he had wisdom in his life. Now that contrasts what the Bible teaches us about worldly wisdom. Oh, there are wise people in this world that aren't saved. There are wise people in this world who are saved that aren't being full of the Holy Ghost and they're walking after their flesh. 
There are people that are wise. They can do things. Now, most of those people have taken biblical principles that are God's wisdom, and they've applied it to the world. That's why they work, because God's wisdom is far above this world's wisdom. Now, you go to James chapter 3 with me, and listen to what the Bible says about this wisdom. You can only have this wisdom in God. There is no other way to have it. And he tells us the difference here in James chapter 3 and verse 13 and following. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above. Oh, so there's another place wisdom comes from? If it's not from above from God, it says this, but it's earthly, sensual, devilish. Verse 16, for where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above, now that's from God, the contrast here, is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. You want the wisdom from above? You've got to be full of the Holy Ghost. You want to be honest? You've got to be full of the Holy Ghost. Verse 5 of Acts chapter 6 says that also Stephen was full of faith, but it was coupled with being full of the Holy Ghost. And he had faith. And I believe this also implies that he was faithful if you're full of faith you're going to be faithful and you can't be faithful without being full of the Holy Ghost won't happen won't happen this contrast living by sight which the Bible says we ought not to be living by sight this is not talking about the world this is talking about the believer in 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7 the Bible says for we walk by faith not by what sight <clears throat> it's a contrast there. Stephen was not walking by sight. If he was walking by sight, I don't think he would have preached a 52-verse sermon. I don't think he would have gotten all that mess because he'd have figured out a way to do it in a little bit different way that he wouldn't have uh, stirred everybody up if he was living by sight. But he was living by faith. Then the Bible says in Acts chapter 6 and verse 8 that we read, this says that he, had, he was full of the power of God. By the way, that's also coupled with him being full of the Holy Ghost in that verse. Full of the Holy Ghost and power. He had the power of God. You want the power of God? Then you have to be full of the Holy Ghost. There's no other way. There's no other way it'll come but that way. And this contrast is, is with, our, with the power of our flesh. You're going to live in one, you're going to live in the power of God in your life, or you're going to live in the power of your flesh in your life. There's no other way to live. It's one of those for the believer. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, we were warned here. Well, Timothy was warned, but we're warned through the scriptures. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 5, he says, Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Either these people are lost, could be speaking about both of these people, could be someone who's lost and they're living a religious life that looks good, but they cannot have the power of God because they don't have the Holy Spirit. Or it's a believer who's going through the motions, but they don't want the Lord to control them, so they're not yielding to God and they don't have the power, but they have the form. They come to church, they look the part, they do what they're supposed to do, but they have no power on the inside. All they have is the flesh and they spin their wheels day after day in the power of the flesh. Stephen's character was different than the world's. His sight was different than the world's. His lifestyle was different than the world's. The lifestyle of a man that is faithful to the Lord and led by the Holy Spirit, it would look something like this. Now, we don't have scripture for this, but I can't help but to believe that this would be true of Stephen. I'm sure that Stephen gave the Lord the first hour of each day. I, wouldn't, I would imagine maybe he gave him more than an hour. But he would give him the first thing in the morning he would spend with the Lord. Get up and he'd have prayer. He'd meditate 
on what he knew about God, on the Old Testament scriptures, maybe some New Testament scriptures uh, that maybe he had or what people remember of Jesus when he was walking around on this earth. And he just spent time with God. He gave him that first part. I'm sure Stephen gave the Lord the first day of the week, Sunday. That's the Lord's day, the Bible tells us. In the book of Acts, they started meeting on the Lord's day when he resurrected from the dead. And he'd gather with other believers and probably more than that, because they met from house to house daily, the Bible tells us. How would you like to start having church every day? That's good with me. I just don't, <laughs> I just don't know if we can get much lower than we are right now tonight <laughs> and still have a good meeting. And uh, so, I mean, if we went on every night uh, there. And so uh, he probably met every, every first part of the week, right? He gave that first day of the week to the Lord. I'm sure Stephen gave the Lord at first of his income. Now, whether you believe that tithing's in the Bible or not for the New Testament believer, what I do know is that if you give by God's grace, you will give more than a tithe because you'll be obedient to God with your money. And I believe he was obedient with everything. He's obedient with his money. He gave at least a tithe. I'm sure that Stephen gave the Lord the first consideration in every decision. Maybe something like this. What would you have me to do, Lord? What would you have for me to do? He asked him. He didn't tell the Lord, this is what I'm going to do. Would you bless me? <laughs> That's the difference. There's a difference. I'm sure that Stephen gave the Lord first place in his heart. Nothing came before the Lord. Because if, if anything comes before the Lord, then you can't be full of the Holy Ghost. You cannot be full of the Holy Ghost. Has the Holy Ghost made you different? Has the Holy Ghost made you different? We know for certain that Stephen, not by his own confession, but the Word of God says that he was full of the Holy Ghost. And it made him different. And if you're full of the Holy Ghost... It will make you different. But we don't want to be different. What are people going to think if I'm different? But we know what we think they would think. Do we want to be different? Jesus saved us to be different. He saved us to be a peculiar people, zealous of good works that he's called us out to do, that he's putting in us, that he wants to work through us. But guess the only way he's going to work them through us is by being filled with the Holy Ghost. That's it. There's no other way. There's no other way. And the danger is we yield to God, he teaches us what to do, and then we don't let him work through us in his power, and we just do what we know to do without him. And then we have a powerless Christianity. We have all the power in us, but we're not letting it do anything outside of us. Being full of the Holy Ghost. Father, take your word tonight. Speak to our hearts. This is all you want for us tonight. May we, may we chew on it. May we think about it. I know I need it. We need to face whatever we need to face, but we need to face it being full of the Holy Ghost. Would you guide us and help us to respond to you tonight like you would desire for us to? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heads bowed, eyes closed, altars open. Maybe you're here tonight and you say, Brother Justin, I'm lost. I'm lost. Well, what that means is you can't be filled with the Holy Spirit. What that means, you'll never be different than the world in, in what you see. You'll never be different than the world in your character. You'll never be able to be honest or have wisdom or have faith or have the power of God. Your lifestyle will speak volumes because you don't have the power 
And one day, you'll go to the same place that every other person that's rejected Jesus goes. Hell, and then cast into the lake of fire. Won't you get saved tonight? If you don't know Jesus tonight? Wouldn't you believe on Jesus Christ as your Savior? He's done everything for you. It's free to us, but it wasn't free to him. He paid everything for us. Believers, are you different than the world? Why don't you ask the Lord to help you? Because if you're not different than the world, and they don't have the Holy Spirit, then you're not yielding to the Holy Spirit. You're not being filled with the Holy Spirit. That's the only, that's the only conclusion you can come to. That's it. How do you see the Lord? If you're full of the Holy Spirit, you're going to see Him the way you ought to be saw. Seen. How's your character? <clears throat> if it's not what it needs to be, then that means you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. If somebody was looking out for people full of the Holy Ghost, would they point you out and say, they're full of the Holy Ghost? That's what was asked of these New Testament believers. Go look out among you and find seven men full of the Holy Ghost. And there were some things that went along with being full of the Holy Ghost. Would somebody accuse you of being full of the Holy Ghost? Now, we know what most people think when they talk about being full of the Holy Ghost. They speak in tongues, they fall on the floor, and they pass out. But that's not what Stephen did. It changed his life. It changed his behavior. Because he was full of the Holy Ghost. That's all God wants. He just wants to control you and help you. He wants to give you power to live for him. Being full of the Holy Ghost will make you different. Make us different. That's what makes the church different than anything else in this world. The power of God. Father, we do thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for Stephen's life. I know he was just flesh, but he yielded to you. He was full of the Holy Spirit. And we need to be full of your Holy Spirit as well. Thank you. Thank you for making that possible. Lord, would you teach us tonight? Would you teach us in the days to come to say yes to you, to give you everything, that we might see your power work in us and through us, and we'd quit working so hard and not seeing anything done because we're doing it with earthly wisdom, fleshly wisdom, by sight, full of carnality? Would you make things easier for us because your power's at work? Please help us, Lord. Please seal the things that, that we've spoken to you, that you've spoken to us, and we've said back to you, and we agree with you, and we want them. Lord, would you honor that tonight? Lord, I don't know if there's one here that's lost or one that'll be listening that's lost. Father, would you bring great conviction upon them Help them to be under that great convicting work of the Holy Spirit that they might come to you and humble themselves and receive Jesus as their Savior. Thank you for hearing us tonight. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Until we meet again, take time to know the Lord and to make him known. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. God bless. <clears throat>